Then we have the oil module. Um, this is the 2014 module, which we'll be releasing to production. This one has two filters on it and a priming pump. The ones that we currently have right now are still the three filter, but next year we'll switch to this. A lot of the changes that we're having right now that we'll make on the green GHG 14, a lot of that hardware change will just automatically carry over. September? Okay, so this will be just a change that they'll see out in the field. And uh, I, I know the first phone call is going to be, you guys forgot one of the filters. And then, uh, of course, our cylinder kit design that we have reduces friction. Uh, oil consumption is virtually nothing anymore. Uh, with the, because we get such complete combustion, um, the days of soot in the oil are not a problem. We are talking earlier about oil. And right now, what you have to look at, and this is a thing that we really emphasize now with the truck owners when they're doing oil sampling for us, that it's not common in your country to look at TAN, which is the total acid number. And in the U.S., they've been doing it for a few years, but acid is a byproduct of combustion in a diesel engine. So what you look at is you look at your total base number up here starts <coughs> and your TAN starts down here. When the two cross, that's when you say, okay, oil is done. It's reached its life. So the better the oil holds the, to the total base number, and the, the better the additive package works on absorbing the acid, the longer the oil lives. Soot, it's just not there anymore. Hey, B50 life. Um, you guys know what B50 life means, but um, the B50 life of a DD15 is 1.5 million kilometers. And what does B50 life mean? It means that 50% of the engines of a certain type require a major repair, which means either in the dictionary it means dropping the oil pan or removing the head. A lot of times you'll see it called average life to overhaul. Just to give you a little perspective back in the ADR80012 liter, the old 12, 12 liter series 60, the B50 life was 1.2 million kilometers. 14 liter, ADR8002, we dropped, jumped it up to 1.6, and now we're 1.9. So the engine's just designed to live a lot longer now. Single slab block design, uh, the more rigidity, and we'll show you some of this. Um, single slab head, uh, with the clamping load of the head bolts, you'll get to see the machine out the plant that torques that. And then again, the asymmetrical turbo. Uh, it's the turbocharger itself today is just goes back to like an EPA 90, well, would be like an 04, 94 engine. I mean, no wastegate, no VGT, no nothing. Just a little cheap old turbocharger that goes there. And uh, for maintenance wise, it's a great thing. Here's our ratings that we have right now, and as I said earlier, um, <coughs> we offer these, but nobody wants them. Everybody, everybody wants this guy right here, and I don't think we've sold one of those, but uh, back in the day when we were working on this, somebody said that this was required, and there again, it's a rating that we don't use. 560, 1850, that's what you, everyone would like. DD13 and DD16 both have torque curves that are very impressive, along with a 15 that it's a very flat torque curve between 1,000 and 1,600 RPM. Series 60's dropped off somewhere around 12 to 1,100 RPM, which meant when you're going up the hill, engine's pulling. And if you got down below 1,200 RPM, you had to come back a half a gear or a full gear to go on up the hill. DD15, DD16, on the HDEP engine, has this flat torque curve now, and it allows you to keep going up that hill with your load at a sustained speed without having to downshift. Every time you have to downshift, you're wasting fuel. So the more you can keep it in the gear, the better fuel economy you're going to get. Oil change. Severe duty, which is, we have one duty cycle in Australia, 40,000. Or, and the thing that changes is the hours between long haul and severe duty. That's, that's where the change is. 
Uh, same with the filter changes. Uh, significant point here is that you would just do a positional valve latch at 100, then 500, and then every uh, half a million after that. Diesel particulate filter. We have uh, two codes. The first code will come up and it will say, okay, you have to take your, your vehicle in and have the ash measured in the filter. We have a, what, what happens is the engine creates the soot. Soot comes out, it's trapped in the filter, it regenerates and burns the soot into ash. The ash builds up at the back bottom of the filter. So then you pull the filter out after it gets to a certain point, which is about a three inch ash depth, and then it's required we take it and we clean it. We have a water-based cleaning system in our Thule, Utah facility which washes the filter out, we get 97% of the ash out of the filter. All of the air-based systems that you see out there in the world are um, at best 50% of the ash that they'll take out. Uh, the reason that a lot of the other um, the manufacturers have to use an air-based system is because their matting around their brick is not, is, has a problem with water. I mean, ours was designed for water because we wash them. So it makes our filter a little bit uh, better and easier to clean when we can get you a longer filter light. But typically what will happen is you'll get your initial check engine light somewhere between 400 and 500 thousand kilometers. That's based on duty cycle. The engine looks at how much fuel you burn, how long it's been under load, how fast it's going. It uses all these calculations as an earth's ash counter and it counts down. Once it hits to a point where it'll turn your check engine up and say, okay, you gotta go get this check. You got 16,000 kilometers after that before it uh, comes up. You're gonna get a light then. You're gonna get a check engine light that comes on uh, between 9 and 1,000 and 10,000 hours, 16,000 kilometers again. And then what has to happen then is it will depower you by 50% if you haven't taken it in. Take it in at a dealer, they have replacement filters, so they'll pull your filter out. They'll measure your ash depth. Uh, we have a predetermined pattern they go, they look at, they measure the ash depth. If the ash depth is still acceptable, they put the filter back in. New gaskets, clamps, reset the timer, away you go. If it's to the point where it needs to be cleaned, they'll put a replacement unit on, then they ship the, the old unit back here and then we clean them. So far, the ones that we've been looking at, um, at a half a mil, we'll be able to just take them out and check the ash and put them back in. We've not had to replace one yet due to the ash accumulation.